Hey, this is Alex BF, and today we're going to take a quick look at a server-side template injection payload um, used against Flask's Jinja 2 templating engine. Um, specifically, this came up in the Hack the Box machine iClean, uh, but uh, this, this video is not going to really care about the box. We're just going to do everything locally, and we're just going to figure out exactly what this payload is doing. Um, it's always easy to grab a payload off payload all the things or hack tricks or something and just give it a use, um, but it's it's useful if you can understand exactly what it's doing and what's going on. Um, I'm a little bit inspired to do this today because uh, Tiptech was asking me a question if I understood how part of it worked. And I said, my first response was, no, I've always just copied and pasted it, but that sent me down the rabbit hole. So now we're going to look at it. So um, let's go ahead and take a look. All right. So let's start by taking a look at the payload. Um, and this is the kind of payload I would just grab out of it, uh, payload all the things and paste in. Um, very quickly, I can quickly recognize that like here's the ID command being run here right here. And so um, if we're going from remote code execution, that's probably what's going to run. Um, if we paste this in, we would see back the output of the ID command. We can see that it's calling popen, which is a function in the OS module. Um, there's an import here. There's something to do with built-ins and globals. Um, I have no idea what the request application object is, but we can figure this out and that's what we're going to do. So let's go over here and we're going to start uh, by just defining a very simple Flask application. Uh, so we will do from Flask import Flask. We will say app is equal to Flask. And for whatever reason we give it, that's, which is always best practice to give it name. Uh, we'll need to define a route. So we'll say uh, app.route and we'll just say for slash. And then the function to handle that we'll call root. And here we, we're, we're just gonna have our root function. Well, for now, let's just see. We'll say uh, return hello. I'm gonna give it a new line so get make it nice and pretty here. And then all we gotta do is do app.run. And we have a really simple flask app. We can do Python test.py. Let's go ahead and make this full screen. Uh, and we can curl local host, if I can type, 5000, and we get back hello. Um, and so what we're gonna do to debug this is we're gonna come in here and uh, we're gonna put breakpoint. Now we're going to drop into the Python debugger whenever we hit that breakpoint. Um, the other thing we're going to need is we're going to do from Flask. We're also going to import, import request. And request is a global variable that's part of the Flask module. And it has all of the information about the request coming in to um, at any given time. And so by importing it here, I get access to it within any of my routes. And I can go ahead and get the information having to do with the request itself. So we can play with that. Um, restart our server here. We will curl localhost. Now we did, before we got anything back, we've hit this breakpoint, so now we're frozen. Um, we have access to the request object. Uh, and if we look at it, let's make this big. Uh, if we look at the request, there's all these different pieces here. So you can access to the cookies, the content type, the content length. Um, the, the args are in here somewhere. I think it's right, must be right around. Oh, anyway. Uh, there's args in here, there's data, uh, the body is here, the URL, the path, et cetera. So we get access to all this information about the route. Um, another, so that now we have that access within our functions here. Um, but we're looking, when we, when we look here, this is actually Jinja language. So Jinja is the template, templating language used by Flask. Um, so Flask will pass variables to a templating language, render that stuff together and form HTML and pass that back. Um, and so, within the templating language, uh, what is going on here? So template injections, when literally when we can push our code into the templating engine. So we're, we're within the Flask or the Jinja context. Well, it turns out that uh, there's a series of global variables that Flask by default passes to all of the Jinja templates. And one of them is request. And so you can see here in the documentation that uh, we're gonna have access to this request object. Um, so. We've got to, the, we now understand what this piece is here. We have the request. Um, the next step here is we're gonna pipe. And in Jinja, what you do is you take an object and you pipe it into a function. The function applies that object and the output pipes to the next, et cetera, until it's done. Um, and we're piping it into adder. Now adder is um, get it like for getting an attribute. Um, now within Python, what that looks like is, uh, so we have the request object uh, here. And we could call something like get adder on request, and we could call it application, pass it the string application. And you can see here, we get back the bound method request.application, which is part of the request um, uh, type. So we've got back a method. We've got back a uh, function here. 
Now, what's interesting is, uh, well, I guess first, in Python, typically you're not going to call get adder. Um, you'd use that if you don't, if you like are storing the attribute name in a variable and you need to get it. Uh, more the, the shortcut function that you're going to see almost all the time is, is actually going to look like this request an application. Uh, it gets the same thing. So that's um, the shortcut there. Uh, but we don't have that shortcut in the Jinja context, which is why we do, we pass to the adder function passing it the application. Now, what is the request that application function? Um, it actually doesn't matter. Um, it's a wrapper function. It's uh, meant to use, it's a decorator that we can apply to things. Um, you can go read in the documentation here uh, exactly all that it does. But the fact is it doesn't matter because what we are using it for in this payload is not what it can do, but for the fact that every function in Python has access to a um, double underscore, we could say dunder globals um, uh, attribute. And when we have access to this globals attribute, so we can say this, we can say dot globals, and we're gonna get a bunch of stuff on the screen. Um, and so because we have access to this globals thing, that's what we're abusing. So we can use any function here. So if we look at uh, dir requests, not requests, like request, um, let's see, let's find another one here that looks like a function um, from values, that looks like a function. I'm just gonna guess. Uh, we can actually, we can check it. We can say uh, type, from values, it is a method, perfect. So now we could say that and dot thunder globals and boom, we get back the same thing. Um, we could even we could even do it for, you know, if we look in my application here, we have the function root. Uh, so we could do root dot thunder globals and we've got access to globals here as well. Um, it's a different, it's different because we're coming from a different context. The globals of the request stuff comes from the mo that module and the globals here are much smaller because I'm dealing with a much smaller code base, but I've got access to that. And that's what, what's important for moving on. So because we know within the Jinja context, we're always gonna have access to this request. We can grab this function that's just gonna always be there and we can get access to the globals within the Flask context and start to abuse that. Uh, so that taken us up through uh, here. Now, I guess I'll point out that, you know, uh, we're passing in this string, which has the hex encoded version of the underscores uh, in Python. That's just fine. Um, that these are just underscores. Ox ox five f is just an underscore. So um, we pass that in probably for WAF evasion to try to avoid getting blocked at a web application firewall. Um, and so the next thing we're going to do is call get items on built-ins, and it's actually un double underscore get items, which is interesting. Um, Let's look a little bit more. So we've got this globals thing. Let's go back to uh, the one from the payload here, uh, here. And we can look at what this is. And it is, uh, oh, I did dir, let's just do type. It's a dictionary. So we have a dictionary. So we can call, uh, maybe it'd be nicer to just do, well, up arrow to get to anything. Uh, if we call dot keys, we can see all the keys that are part of this globals dictionary. Um, and so we have various things here. The one that's useful here is the built-ins. And that's, that's what we got in the payload. We're gonna call uh, this get item attribute uh, on get built-ins. Now, if you have a dictionary, um, we, can, we can make a real simple example here. If we do A is one, B oops, is two, we can say there's our X dictionary. We can call get, is it get, get or is it get items? Uh, uh, get item? Don't actually do this very often. I think it's just get. Yeah, so you can call a get one. Um, if you call C, you know, get nothing back. You can give it a default value here of four and you get four. Um, but so we have this get thing um, that is getting pushed. That's getting similar to the get item thing here. So we're, what we're doing is we're calling get on the built-ins thing, which we can also just do by doing like this. Uh, B U I L T ins under that. And we get back another huge blob of data. We can type this to see what it is. Uh, it's another dictionary. So we've got another dictionary of the built-ins. Uh, we can get the keys. And you can see here the different keys that are here. Um, if we go back to our payload, so once we've got this built-ins thing, we're going to call get the att attribute get item. Another, we're going to fetch an item from dictionary again. And this time we're going to get dunder, dunder, under, dunder import. Um, and so if we go ahead and do that, under import. Um, this is the built-in function that is actually when you call it from Flask import Flask or import request, um, this is the raw function that that is using, that that keyword template is using. So what's this, you never would use this in legit Python, but <coughs> 
in these kinds of payloads, it's actually quite useful because what it does when you call import, you know, from Flask import Flask, it takes Flask and puts it into the globals. It makes it avail avail available. Well, I guess not the globals within the local context. It makes it available within that context. When you call Dunder import on something, and so we can do it here with like OS, it returns the OS module, and so we actually have a function here that is returning to us the OS module, um, and that is super useful here because that's actually exactly what we're doing right here. Is we are now all the way up to here. We have now got the OS module. Um, and so now we can call attribute again to get a function off of that. And so we come over here and we call dot p open. Boom, we've got the p open function now. We've got access to it. And so now it's looking pretty simple. If we just do id here, um, that returns this weird wrap thing. But we, if you've ever used p open before, you'll just know we can just use read and boom, we've got back the, the, the execution of I, this command right here. Um, and so that's remote code execution. Um, that's basically what we need right there. So we can also just to sort of go back to what we were showing earlier. Um, I can do similar things here. It's slightly different because of the context. This actually won't work. Um, but if I come here and for whatever reason, if I make this a dot, it works there as well. So um, we these payloads just need to get a hold of a function and get into the globals and understand the structure of the globals to grab the built in the import function get the, in this case, the OS module. Um, no reason I couldn't use the subprocess module or something else as well, um, but OS just has this nice popen function, so when you're just hacking, it's good enough. And uh, that's it. So um, I'm gonna cut it here, but that's, I uh, just wanted to just thought it would be neat to do an explanation of a payload that probably, if you're watching this, you've made it this far for sure. You've probably copied and pasted a payload like this many times. Um, so. And hopefully next time you do, you'll look at it and go, yeah, I know what it's doing. So thanks for hanging out with me today. I will talk to you next time.